Io. In our last video, we generated this blog post from a YouTube link. But the first draft is so robotic. The allure of serverless computing. <laughs> it really is. But we get the best results when AI agents and humans work together, right? Exactly. So what if I could just tell it, hey, make this more conversational? I built an app that does just that. Let me show you. Welcome to the show, Io. What do you do here at Google? I'm a developer relations engineer. I show developers how to use Google's AI to solve problems in their applications. Awesome. So today we're tackling that robotic text problem we showed in the cold open. Uh, we're going to show how a human and an AI agent can collaborate on editing, right? That's right. First, let me use the app to generate a blog post from a video. Let's pick your video about how to use temp files in Cloud Run. <laughs> that was a good video. I shot it back in 2023 uh, before I set up my new uh, background here. Yeah, it looked different. Uh, your new background looks great. Oh, thank you, Io. A friend who is a cinematographer helped me with it. All right, I'll let that run. And now it's done generating the blog post. Right, the blog post is okay. But the first sentence is a mouthful. The allure of serverless computing is your promise uh, of abstracting away infrastructure management. Uh, I'd like it to be more conversational. All right. I'll scroll to the bottom and ask it to update the post. Yeah, I don't like doing this kind of change to text manually. It may require updating the text in dozens of places. It's hard to be consistent. Uh, this kind of job is tedious for humans, at least for this human. Uh, fortunately, it's easy for Gemini. I'll let it think. And now it's done. How do you like the new text, Martin? Ah, it, it looks much more conversational. It dropped that sentence about the allure of serverless computing, replaced it with, uh, so you're diving into serverless computing, right? I like it. Uh, but I feel like something is missing. Uh, let's ask the agent for suggestions. And here they are. What do you think? Now I know what the blog post was missing. It didn't start with a hook. That's item two on the list there. Let's do it. I asked the agent to implement item two, which is adding a hook. Whoa, that's fast. In reality, it takes a moment for the model to think, right? Exactly. We're reducing the pauses to keep the video moving. The model you choose is a trade-off. Gemini Pro gives you the highest quality reasoning Gemini Flash Lite is the fastest and most cost-efficient model. Gemini Flash is the balanced all-around model in the middle. Every developer has to decide what's right for their app. I love that new hook. Your serverless function works until the library throws a file not found error. That has happened to me. Was that why you shot this video back in 2023? <laughs> it may have been. I actually don't remember. Now, we just saw a human and an AI working together to create a blog post. And the result is better than if only the human or only the AI had done it. How was this done? Well, first I built some agents in ADK, Google's agent development kit. A root agent, an updater agent, and a critic agent. The root agent is a generalist and a router. And the updater agent is more of a specialized agent? That's right. It specializes in updating the blog post according to the input that it's getting, like make it more conversational. The last agent is the critic agent. It's good at spotting things that can be improved in the current draft of the blog post. This is what the code looks like for the root agent. It's pretty simple. It knows its prompt. It defines its output. and knows about the two specialist agents. OK, that root agent code was pretty simple. How about the specialist agents? They're even simpler. Each agent knows its prompt and what to call its output. Where are those output keys used? They're how the agents pass information to each other. For example, the critic agent saves the suggestions to an output key named blog post. Here we can see how the updater agent's prompt incorporates that output. It's how they collaborate. OK, so you have three agents defined. Now what? It's time to test them. ADK has this nifty command, ADK web. It starts a web interface where I can talk to my agents. For example, I can paste in a short blog post, 
and asked for how it can be improved. Over here on the left, I can see which agents are called. This is useful for debugging. You can see which agents did what. Once I'm happy with my agents, I can deploy them to Vertex AI, Agent Engine, or Cloud Run. I'll pick Cloud Run by running this command. OK, it looks like a Cloud Run deployment started there. I recognize the output. Uh, now, once the deployment is complete, what then? Then I'll have an API for my agent. My web app can send an HTTP request to the URL of the Cloud Run service. When the Cloud Run service receives that request, my agents spring into action. What does the code in your web app look like, uh, the code that makes that HTTP call? Uh, here it is. I put all the agent-related code in the agent gateway py file. It expects the URL of the ADK app to be in the environment variable agent URL. If there is an occurrence session, it creates one. Uh, so the session is how the agent understood what you meant when you wrote implement item 2 in the chat earlier? That's exactly right. Without that session, it would have no idea that item 2 meant start the blog post with a better hook. That state and memory is important for natural conversations. Let's continue with the code. Here it composes the request. Here it sends a request to the ADK app. And there it parses the response. That's great, Io. But I have some questions for you. Go ahead, Martin. What does the ADK give me that I don't get from just making a direct call to the Gemini API? I can see that the state and memory is a big piece of it, uh, like we saw with that session before. But is there anything else? Uh, you're right. State and memory is the first big win. But we also get a nice developer experience with ADK Web. That makes it easy to test and debug your ADK apps before you deploy them. That makes sense. Finally, you get orchestration of multiple agents. For example, if I ask it to find improvements on the blog post and to make them, ADK can make sure that the right agents are called and in the right order. This can be very valuable for more automated use cases, where you want several agents to work together without human intervention, and then present the end result to the user. In other words, ADK lets you focus on the creative part, defining what your agent actually does. Got it. Your ADK app used three different agents. Why more than one? Couldn't we just have written a long, good, single prompt? It's much easier to build and test an agent that does one thing very well. My critic agent has a very specific prompt, and I don't have to worry about that logic confusing the AI when I ask it to update a blog post. It's a single responsibility principle from software development, but applied to agents. Ah, I like it. Keep it simple, keep it debuggable. So why did you deploy the ADK as part of a separate Cloud Run service? Couldn't it just have been part of the original web app? Yes, it could have been. But if it's a separate service, it scales up and down independently of the main web app. And other apps may need to call it. And as you tune your prompts, you may want to update the ADK app more often. It's nice to be able to deploy that separately. And you showed us sessions in the ADK app and why they're useful. But what happens to the session memory if the Cloud Run service scales down to zero? Well, right now, the ADK app is storing the memory of the conversation in RAM. It's fast, requires no setup, so it's good for development. For a production app, you may want to use more permanent memory. If you deploy in Cloud Run, you can tell ADK to store sessions in a relational database. Or if you deploy your ADK app on Agent Engine, you can use its built-in session service. So we edited a blog post today. What are some other use cases for ADK? Uh, is it more for text and content like we did here? Or could you use it for other things like analyze data, orchestrate uh, API calls, that sort of thing? Well, you can define tools in ADK which can do database lookups or call other APIs or take actions on the user's behalf. For example, we could add a new agent that publishes the blog post when the user asks for it. We define a tool that calls the API of the blogging platform. All right. So if I want to learn more about agents and how to build them, where's a good place to start? The ADK page on GitHub has many good example apps. And the code for this video episode is on GitHub as well. Sounds good. I'll share the links to those repos in the video description below. Thanks for sharing this with us, Io. Thanks for having me, Martin. Remember, Google's ADK simplifies AI agent development so you can focus on the creative part, defining what the agents do. Agents improve debugging and quality. 
good points. And thank you everyone for watching. If you have any questions for Io or me, ask in the comments. Also, do let me know what you thought of today's episode. I read every single comment. Can't wait to see what you build!